On Thursday morning, the 10th of January 2002, at 8.15 a.m., my family's life changed forever. My husband, Liam, sat me down on our bed and told me he couldn't go to school that day. He couldn't teach anymore because he couldn't remember what to do. Liam was in his early 40s. Even though it was only the beginning of our journey with Alzheimer's, in some way it was the end of two years of me knowing there was something wrong, something not quite right with Liam. Two years of pleading and trying to get him to accept that something was wrong. Personally for me, um, when I had a start get, getting dementia, um, I was asking ridiculous questions at home and it was um, a, a lot of hassle at home for, for my wife as well, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, to be asked, and I didn't know. But when, when I, when I um, eventually went to the Alzheimer's unit, it became more clear to me what was actually happening to me and um, I could learn to cope with it a lot better. Two years into my Alzheimer's journey, not a lot appears to have changed on the surface. Of course, I can't remember names of people and places. I forget what I have left, where I have left things, and my constant question to my long-suffering wife is, have you seen my glasses, cap, walking stick, whatever? There was no way I can describe the shock the day that I received my diagnosis and the long, lonely drive home from Galway to Sligo wondering how I was going to tell Sean and Martin. There was, however, also a degree of relief in getting a diagnosis, as I really thought I was losing my mind. I don't remember the conversation with my family, but I do remember the pain. So I want you to ask yourself this question. How do you tell your loved ones that when an undisclosed amount of time, you will not be able to recognize them nor retain all wonderful memories that you've banked along the way? And that is how I felt on my drive home. I was never a person that could tell my mother I loved her. It was just wasn't something, wasn't something I'd say. I wasn't. I'd never talk about my feelings um, until this diagnosis, until Alzheimer's uh, visited us. Um, and over time, I was. I, I told my mother I loved her every day. Um, and it's something that's come into the rest of my life. I tell my my wife I love her every day. I tell my son I love him every day. Um, that's, I don't think that's something I would have been able to do for my, except for the, going through the experience that I have had with my mother. Um, but also there's very upsetting things as well as a carer. Um, a lot of guilt because of some of the reactions I would have had to my mother. Um, for example, just helping my mom, assisting my mom with her dinner and she might spit it out. And this is when she wasn't able to verbally say that she, what was wrong. And I, I was just, I was just frustrated, angry, and I might give a shout at my mother, saying, "What's wrong with you?" And I'd walk out of the room. And these, these things cripple you, to be honest, unless you can get a hold of them. I used to go to bed. I could, na- friends and neighbours could call over, and I'd be sitting at home, and they'd say, "Isn't he? Look, he's doing so well. There's not a bother on him. He's the right lad to be." I would go down to bed most nights, and I'd bawl my eyes out, and I, I'd come up the next day, and I'd be. Happy Sean Donald again, happy let go out and I could have my Saturday night and not a bother. As the years went by and the children went through their teenage years, it became more and more difficult for them to see their daddy fading away. So their visits became less and less. Liam did not recognize them anymore. Or me. It's funny really because he still remembered my ma'am, so I'm not really sure <laughs> how that came in. I think it must be the cruelest of illnesses, seeing Liam just waste away. He once was a strong, six-foot, gentle and caring, loving husband and a wonderful father. If you have dementia, or your family member does, my advice would be to keep active. Stay a part of the local community. Join a support group and don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. I also believe that it's good to be open about having dementia. I always tell people that I have the condition. I don't believe in hiding it away. There should not be a stigma around dementia. Five years ago, I wouldn't have left the house. Now I'm traveling with assistance, driving, having passed my test two weeks ago again, (laughs) and living life 
with support from family and the friends. I'm travelling all over Europe, speaking about dementia and campaigning for rights and engaging in major research that I hope someday will find a cure. There is no cure for me. One of the things I found hardest was seeing my mother crying when she, after receiving a diagnosis and seeing my mum crying when she, thinking, when she was thinking nobody could see her. My mother cried an awful lot about her illness um, and as, as the illness progressed, she used to apologise to me for having the illness. And look, it's, it, it's, it's, it sounds crazy to me. I, I was just keep telling her, why would she apologise over something that she had no control on? And, and that, is it, that is it with Alzheimer's. Nobody has control. It, 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 it recognises no race, no creed. It recognises there's no boundaries with Alzheimer's. You can be rich, poor, black, white. It doesn't matter. Um, and I think that's why nights like tonight are important, to reach out to absolutely everybody in every walk of life. We're all equal when it comes to dementia. Thank <laughs> you.